going on guys? Victor here. I am at the beach. Juno Ryan, my buddy Ryan is down there. He gave me the meat call as well as Alec and told me that there are a ton of glass minnows on the beach. So if you look behind me, there are seagulls everywhere. There's lots of seaweed and the water's really murky, but what you guys can't see is there's actually a ton of little bait fish known as anchovies. The same anchovies you guys actually saw Brooke, I, and the fam eat a little bit ago. For the longest time, you guys have been requesting a ladyfish catch clean cook, and I'm pretty confident if I cast little lures like this little bucktail, they are gonna be in there. Ryan said he's already jumped off a few, so uh, let's get to casting and see what we can put on the beach. How sick is this? Hey, do you uh, you wanna catch and cook this? No, I'm good. We got plenty in Brooke's backyard. What's up, Ryan? What's going on, What's man? What's going on, bro? Just, you know, just waylaying them. Just target species for sure. So this is actually what's out there. These are what's known as anchovies. Everyone calls them glass minnows, but this is what's out there by the millions and trillions. Oh baby, please, please, please stay on. No, man. Ah. I feel like the world's biggest goober right now. But uh, so Ryan and I were way down there and walking up and down the beach and there's minnows everywhere, but there's no fish really congregating. There's minnows everywhere and the tarpon have completely shut off. I just lost the ladyfish, which is one of the targets because I've been trying to do it for you guys. And since the fish are out kind of far, what I did is all the pier guys out there will know this trick. You take a little spoon, sometimes you take a bobber, and that's not your primary lure. That's just using to get something light out far. You get that, take the hook off, get some leader, and then I got a little bucktail jig I'm trying to catch a ladyfish with, and I'm using the weight of the spoon to get it out there. What the hell? Oh, lady! Lady, lady, stay, stay on, baby! Please, please! Never wanted to catch a ladyfish so bad in my life. No! <laughs> Bro, this is the second one that did that. That is a Senate Barracuda. I haven't seen one of those since the Juno, Juno days. days. Since the Juno days. That is, it's a knockoff generic version of a Barracuda. Here, I can rinse it off if you want. Sure. A lot of weird stuff out there, isn't there? Yeah. They're in the Barracuda. Oh, family. oh, oh. What's up? Is it a lady baby? It's not fighting much. Double Senates? Double Senate. Ryan? Could be. It might be a scent could catch and cook today. Hey man, you gotta give what the ocean can give you. You, you gotta give the ocean dude, what you got a butterfish. <laughs> moonfish. No way. Wow, there's all sorts of exotics out here. Look at that. I got me a Mooney. Come on, dude. There's just all sorts of species eating out there. That's a moonfish. And this right here. You might think is a barracuda, but that yellow stripe right there and they kind of got a different mouth. Yeah, it's, they're in the same family, but just a different species. They don't get nearly as big as the great, great barracuda. Nope. Oh, that's a lady. Yes, 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 stay, 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 stay. I will kiss you, ladyfish, if you come in whole. No, you won't. I will, ki I will literally kiss right, it. you gotta kiss it. You're on my video too. Ryan, you better dive, swan dive in if I lose it. No! <laughs> what the hell? There he is, over there. Where? <laughs> Just my luck. Lady, 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 lady. It's like you have to horse them in because if you play it with too much drag, they just jump so much and then they come off. Woo! Making a fool out of me. As promised, ladies and gents. Oh, ladyfish catch and cook never tasted so good. <laughs> it's like the things you try to target that are so easy generally are always the most elusive ones. So I need to get a few more. 
So even though I only caught one ladyfish, Chris Lowe came through. He um, actually had a cooler full of ladyfish from the other day when he was commercial fishing. So he provided some for our dinner. Here's what you're gonna do. This is gonna be so similar to the clown knife fish uh, video that I did as far as scooping the meat off. I am 100% confident this fish is gonna taste great. Ladyfish have a ton of scales and since we're gonna scrape the meat off, I don't want any scales in my final product. So what I'm gonna do is take a hose from the tail to the head and just knock out all those scales. Now we're just gonna knock off one side just like we do with any fish. And you know what? I'm just gonna do a mackerel style fillet. Just like that, knock that side off. Oh my wow, gosh. Wow, glass minnows. Woo, baby. So you see the glass minnows that we were uh, fishing in school? This guy is full of minnows. I mean, full. Now what you do is, I'm just gonna go ahead and take out this stomach lining. Actually saving that for crab trap bait for Brooke's grandma. Now all you need to do is, the reason people don't keep ladyfish, I'm thoroughly convinced is A, people just don't know any better. And B, they're very bony and mushy. The meat, like this is caught yesterday, iced well, and it's just, it's mushy. People don't like mushy fish. But a second thing is, is they have these tiny little pin bones everywhere. Kind of like needlefish, kind of like clown knife fish. So what do we do? You make this into fish cakes, fish balls, fish fritters, whatever it may be into, you make it into kind of like a paste. Starting from your tail end, going towards the head end. Get yourself a little kitchen spoon. You can give it some oomph and just scrape that meat away. And when you scrape this away, you're not gonna end up with any bones in your final product. That's all boneless filet. And I just continue to do that on one side. Now let's do it on this side. It's very self-explanatory. Do not let it intimidate you. It literally just comes. Let's get rid of that little bit of blood. It comes right off. You know, if you see you're getting bones in it, you're probably pushing a little bit too hard with your spoon and feel around, but there's no bone in there whatsoever. Okay, continue to do that. And now, look at this. So if I were to fillet this, if you guys kind of see that, that's all little feather-like pin bones. So not only do you have the bones that run along the backbone, but you have all these little pin bones that you'd have to eat around if you were to fillet it. So the first person to ever try lady fish, he was like, this is gross, I'm not eating it. That's probably where the trash fish in ladyfish came from. Because unless you get creative, unless you know how to cook it, if people don't know what to do with it, they automatically think it's junk, which isn't true. You just gotta know how to process it. So we got one side down. Now I'm gonna continue to do this with the rest of the ladyfish. And you know, you might not be used to it, but it's, it's a meatball. If you've ever eaten ground beef, it's essentially the same thing just with fish. Fish has a, uh, a softer texture. But we're gonna make an absolutely delicious soup and fritters with our lady fish. And one last thing I wanted to show you guys was this. The reason we were having such a hard time hooking them and keeping them hooked, lady fish and tarpon have extremely hard mouths. And it's really hard to get the hook through there and they jump like crazy. They're always throwing the hook. So as silly as it sounds, ladyfish are actually pretty hard to catch. They're dumb, but keeping them on the hook is not that easy. So I'm gonna go ahead, keep scraping away, and I'll catch you guys in the kitchen. Okay, so we're not cooking at our house today. We're actually at Brooke's parents' house, and that is because she has been slaving away making <laughs> these lobster nets for you guys. Um, a couple of days ago, we launched a website called FloridaLobsterNets.com. The famous lobster nets that you guys always see us use in our dive videos, they're handmade by Brooke. She makes some, she makes all the acrylic. I help her with the netting. And, um, but she's literally from like 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. making these nets. And that's why we're cooking here because she's still making them outside. So I'm gonna do a little lunch at Brooke's parents' house. So as promised, we're gonna do two versions of the ladyfish. This right here, these are fish balls. So, I didn't get to show this on video because Brooke was making the nets at home, but essentially you make fish paste. You take your fish, you put it in a food processor or a mixer, 
Add whatever seasonings you want, add a little bit of flour and water to get kind of like a springy texture. Dip them into cold water so they uh, maintain their form and they don't loosen up on you like these are starting to loosen up on me. Then we're gonna boil them. They're kind of like fish dumplings, just like dumplings you would boil in water. I divided my ladyfish into equal portions. I probably got around two and a half, three pounds of ladyfish. I know it doesn't look appetizing now, but just hold out with me. This is what your ladyfish looks like. It's pure mush, not fishy whatsoever, not smelly. And over here, I have a basic fritter batter, kind of like a uh, conch fritter. I added some thyme, paprika, salt, pepper, garlic powder. One egg, about three quarters of a cup of milk, and about one and a half cups of flour. This is the consistency. I made sure to mix that first. We're gonna add our ladyfish straight into here. Okay, we're gonna add our ladyfish into there. And then this is half, about a quarter of a yellow onion, minced, one clove of garlic, some green bell pepper, some yellow bell pepper, and one red chili for some heat. And we're gonna mix this all together, and I've never done this before, but it seems to be working well. And so I wanted to do kind of like, I wanted to make two different meals, I guess you could say, with the ladyfish. Something that's more presentable and easy for someone to do at home, like a fritter, because who doesn't love fried fish? It's essentially fried fish, just in fish paste form, mixed with vegetables and kind of like with your own batter. And then we're gonna do like a, it's basically boiled fish balls and that's like really the true nature of the fish. And you can make these as big as you want. We'll do about that size and we're just gonna plop them into the oil. Okay, so this is the last batch coming off. I already tested them out, but I gotta see what the fam thinks. And they are delicious. Okay, so before we serve, we're just gonna hit them with a little salt, since they're nice and hot. You can't have fried food without salt. And then this stuff here? Yeah, you can dip it in there. That's, it's, it's a take on conch fritters, but with ladyfish. Mmm. Go underneath this one. <laughs> That's pretty good, man. They are really good. Oh, man. I was thinking ladyfish. Oh, not another one of these. But this thing is good. Mmm, I like it. Yeah? Mmm. It's like a conch fritter, right? Both ladyfish. It's crazy good. Better than conch <laughs> fritter. Really? So not fishy at all. Mm -hmm. Nothing weird about it, right? Nothing weird about it whatsoever. What made you think? What made you think to do it in a conch fritter? Well, I, I knew I got to do some type of fish paste, and you got to do fish cakes, fish balls. I don't know. I just I, you gotta you gotta treat the fish for what it's worth. There's no such you know. There's nothing yeah. wrong with any fish. You just mm -hmm. gotta. It's delicious. Yeah. Mm. You gotta salt. treat it for what it's worth. Victor invited me to lunch, and he said, "Yeah, we're doing ladyfish. They're real bony and real mushy," and I said, "Oh wow." What kind of invite is that? These things are terrific cooked this way. It's it's like Victor said, you, you, you gotta cook each fish a certain way, and this is fantastic done this way. Good job, Vic. Thank you. So if you guys are wondering what it looks like, you got a nice little, it's not too crunchy, but a crunchy exterior. And kind of just like the clown knife fish, you get a real spongy, just very mild tasting fish, and you get all those veggies in there, the bell peppers. It's just very good. Um, is super flavorful. It was delicious. So that was round one. That was our ladyfish fritters. Now, I got a Dutch oven here and we're gonna make a little Asian style soup. I have some minced carrot and onion going for about five minutes now. Here we have about that much ginger and about half a head of garlic mixed together. We're gonna put that in there. Now, Brooke's favorite thing in the world, besides me, of course, is mushrooms, right? I'm gonna put the mushrooms in there. We're gonna let those cook down. Now that our mushrooms have gone for a little bit, 
This is the last remaining quart of lobster stock I made. This is from mini season of this year. And as promised, I use it all. We're gonna dump that in there. The lobster stock and the veggies are gonna serve as like the foundation of our sauce. But this is gonna be a little semi-homemade meal. Everybody loves ramen. We're gonna put in ramen here, not yet though. What we're gonna do is the seasoning packet there's no really difference between using this or chicken stock. It's gonna be pretty much the same flavor. So I'm gonna do two packets for now. I'll save the rest because I don't want it to be overwhelming. And I'm very curious to know, I get a lot of DMs on Instagram, at Lane Shark Outdoors by the way, of people saying that they've recreated Brooker Eyes recipes. I'm very curious. If you guys have ever recreated one of Brooker Eyes recipes, comment below now and what you did and how you liked it because I'm curious, you know? So we're gonna do another flavor packet. I said also comment below if your girlfriend or boyfriend is a little crazy and eats raw noodles. Okay, now we're gonna add water. And now you're just gonna add water to the amount of soup you want essentially. So I brought a little stock pot to boiling, reduce the heat a little bit. And once they're floating, just like a normal flour dumpling, they're done. So these have a little bit of coriander, garlic powder, salt, um, allspice, that little bit of green in there you see, that is cilantro. And I did add a little bit of flour to just to give it some consistency because I wasn't sure how it was gonna be to be just straight fish. So my fish balls kind of fell apart on me. They got real loose, but they all taste the same. They just might not look as pretty. Brought it up to a boil. I got about half of a bok choy cut up. We're gonna add into our soup. as well as we're gonna season it with a little bit of soy. Okay, and we're also gonna add in our ramen now as well. I added all four seasoning packs as well, just because it wasn't, it was too watery. Because I didn't use straight chicken stock, I used a lot of water on top of my lobster stock. Okay, so this is how you know your fish balls are done when they're floating like that. A couple of them fell apart on me. I got a little lazy with some of them. And um, you know, the first batch, this is the first batch, wasn't as pretty as the second because you get better at forming them. But they taste amazing. This is your ramen bok choy soup with mushroom, carrot, ginger, all sorts of good stuff in there. Okay, these are ladyfish fish balls. Everybody can have three. Bean sprouts. That's not enough bean sprouts. <laughs> some me fresh, of, oh sorry. Some fresh scallion. And you gotta finish it off with some cilantro. So are these things heating up in the soup or were no, they- No, they just came oh, out. They just cooking. came out. Yeah. They're gonna be hot. Oh, they are? Yeah, I'd cut them in half if I were you. I'd be careful. Oh, okay. I don't know how Vic comes up with this stuff. Look, 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 shine in here on, on my plate, bro. There's so many unique flavors and textures in this bowl. It's, it's delicious as well as interesting and uh, I've never had anything quite like it. It's it's a treat. It, it really is. How do you like your ladyfish balls? Look, you're about to take a bite. Mmm, they're good. It's like a little fish dumpling. Look at how beautiful that bowl is. All those colors. Pretty. That's your fish ball or fish dumpling, as you could say. It's very tender. You get some broth. These are really hot. If I were to describe it, if you've ever had a potato dumpling or flour, flour dumpling, like the kind you just put on top of a soup, with a slight fishy flavor. Very mild. I don't think anyone really even guessed you're eating fish, and it is mainly fish. It's, I'd say seven eighths fish and just a little bit of flour. It's delicious. All right, 
so Victor did it again with something that most people would never even think about eating or even want to eat and probably think is bad and absolutely killed it. The fried fritters were amazing. The soup was absolutely delicious. And then the fish balls were terrific. I, I It's like I don't even know what to say. Like <laughs> That says it all. You want to get every last drop of that stuff. That lobster stock. I mean, who saves lobster stock in the refrigerator and then makes something that looks like that out of it? Who does that? <laughs> <laughs> and he's been, he's been wanting to do a ladyfish catch and cook for a long time and it finally happened. I know he personally only caught one, right? Yeah. But look at this amazing thing that he made out of catching one fish. Like, so cool. You know it's good when you drink it like a cup of... <laughs> 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 like it's a cup, right? Oh, it's amazing. It's really good. There we go. Thank you, guys. I feel honored to be at this table because everyone's so kind, and um, thank you guys, seriously, for all those kind words. I really appreciate it. And if you guys have never had ladyfish, go ahead and try it because it is another one of those things that as long as you know how to prepare it, it is delicious. Now, to close out the video, these are the lobster nets that Brooke has been tirelessly laboring after every single day. You guys can find them at floridalobsternets.com. They're all handmade and um, I mean, nothing beats them. Everybody, we've had so many people send in pics from mini season, from opening day, saying they love the nets and uh, thank you to anyone who's bought one. So you guys can check them out in the description box below. If you guys have any questions, you can email us. And yeah, I'm headed to the Keys tomorrow. Got a lot of good videos planned for you guys. I want to thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.